笑了。podcast where we review discuss and recap every episode of doctor who one doctor at a time i'm scott corelli i'm cassandra fredrickson and i am nick jimenez today on the show we'll be discussing robot or robot or uh what have you uh which is the fourth doctor's <laughs> first story um written by uh the terrence, terrence Dix. Dix and yeah terrence Dix and directed by uh, Christopher Barry, the seventy fifth um, episode, seventy yeah seventy fifth episode first first story of season twelve. Um, so this is this is the twelfth year we've we've jumped forward in time quite a bit. <laughs> we really have. We're uh, we're now in uh, uh just just right there in in seventy four. We're right on the on the edge of seventy four into seventy five. So we're just we're full on seventies in this in this thing. My brother was. Born? Nope, my brother was born in seventy five. Never mind. Okay. Well. Greece came out in seventy four, right? No, that was like, no, that was like seventy eight. Okay, well, right. we're, you're batting a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Things I don't know. <laughs> um. All right. Well, uh, Cass, tell us about part one. All right. Um. So part one starts off. Uh kind of overlapping with the previous story. Uh, the previous story is Pertwee's last story, um, Planet of the Spiders, which we'll get to, I imagine, years from now. Um, mm-hmm. So the so- Sometime in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, so, the, <laughs> so the Doctor regenerates <laughs> from Pertwee into Tom Baker. Um, and it's one of the few regenerations that happens outside the TARDIS. Um, so the Brigadier's there, Sarah Jane is the companion now, um, and so they, like, witness this, and they're like, whoa, that's weird. Um, and it's kind of like a, like, super nostalgic for me, because it's just like, oh, yeah, I love everybody in this room, unit's awesome. Um, and then the, uh, the doctor kind of does his weird post-regenerative crazies, and then we cut to this weird like filter over this camera and these really crappy Lego robot hands. Um, and, uh, said robot hands are breaking into this building. It opens a safe. They murder some, a human. Yeah. It murders a guy to steal some top secret stuff. Um, and then we cut back to the doctor and he's awake and he sees the TARDIS and his face is just like, Oh my gosh, I love you. Um, and he's like, just trying to leave. Um, and it's just, like, a lot of uh, parroting, almost, um, like, Pertwee. Um, there's, like, a mirror. He checks out his face. He does the whole, like, oh, the TARDIS key's in his shoe. He wants to leave. He's trying to get in the TARDIS. Um, and um, this guy who is going to be, spoilers, he's going to be the companion um, for, like, the first couple seasons. First couple seasons? First season of Tom Baker. His name's Harry Sullivan, and he's a doctor. Um, so he is in charge of taking care of the doctor while he's in his, like, crazy mode. Um, and then the doctor challenges him to some jump rope, and then we cut to... (laughs) It's weird. The doctor is trying to leave, and he, like, hog ties Harry up in a locker. Um, and the TARDIS is gonna fly away, but Sarah Jane's like, no, wait! And he stops for Sarah Jane, because Sarah Jane. Um... And Who wouldn't stop for him? Yeah. I ask you. She's so adorable. Um, and he kind of, like, snaps back into his, like, normal kind of state of being. Um, and, like, Sarah Jane tells him about the uh, this break-in at this facility. Um, and that kind of 
snaps him back. Um, and he's interested in that. And we go back to RoboVision. Uh, he chops a guy. He, like, karate chops a telephone, <laughs> like, off of a wall. <laughs> and it blows up for some reason. <laughs> oh, my God. The robots, well, whatever the Lego hands are attached to, they steal more stuff. Um, then we cut back to the doctor. Everything is awesome. <laughs> The doctor comes out in, like, some outfits. He's trying to find his new look. So he comes out as a Viking. He comes out as this weird, like, King of Hearts kind of thing. He comes out as this weird clown. And then he finally emerges with his, like, signature space hobo couture outfit. Um, and, like, one of the one of my favorite, just the, 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 the joke of, like, this thing. No. Because Brigadier's like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't wear that. No, you can't. And then he comes out in, like, his weird effing fourth doctor outfit <laughs> yeah. and the brigadier is like fine sure let's go good enough <laughs> <laughs> and Whatever. like what a great i don't know it, it almost seems like a joke that would be in a moffat episode paying tribute to that outfit you know what i mean yeah like mm-hmm. the way that it's set up it's so like reverse iconic because <laughs> like i'm sure the original well, you're gonna see you're actually gonna see another scene uh three stories from now in which the doctor does the exact same thing. Like it's the exact same joke. Nice. Like three stories from now. Uh, It's it's like an ode to this. You know, it's interesting that (laughs) I was just talking about how, um, how pert we was sort of missing all of the like quintessential, like, I think this is the first quintessential regeneration episode for me, at least because I'm like, Oh, he's doing the same it's like, oh, okay, so this is, this is like the, this is very clearly what, like, you know, what Eccleston will do and what Tennant will do and what Smith will do, you know, in terms of, like, being out of it and, like, you know, remarking upon their appearance and, like, trying on clothes and just the kind of the, I, I, I was seeing more, more of the modern doctor than I, I had seen before, like, in this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a reason why Tom Baker is the iconic doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think, I think that's, I mean, he really does come, come through the door swinging. He really does. He he swings for the fences, this guy. Um, this is before he stops appreciating the show. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not before he appreciated Uh. it again. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh man. So. <clears throat> he he comes out with his outfit, and then we cut to, like, they go examine the crime scene, and he does some doctor stuff. Um, and meanwhile, Sarah Jane is visiting the scientific uh, research building. They refer to it as Think, Think tank. tank, which is, like, the most generic name. Uh, and she, I love, I love what she does, because she's like, oh, what's in here? And there's a, a door that's clearly marked absolutely no admittance, but she just, like, sprints for it. And it's just like, oh, yeah, clearly I belong here. Um, so Sarah Jane goes into the room and it's empty, um, kind of like the uh, the Auton room, kind of. Um, and there's a vacant scientist and he used to work in robotics. And she's like, oh, that's weird. And then she leaves and then the um, the uh, they're at a, um, a building and they have uh, like a unit set like surrounding it and they're like oh yeah i know it's impregnable you know we have helicopters and guys with guns everywhere and the doctor's like oh so the only way to go into the building is from the ground and lo and behold there's like a like a drill and you see like the shovel just kind of poke in the ground and it's really funny um and it steals whatever they're protecting in there some kind of circuitry um there's some giant footprints um, and then while all this shenanigans happening, Sarah Jane breaks back into the, uh, the research building co- to kind of check out the empty room and she finds oil on the floor and she like turns around and then there's like a freaky robot and she's like, Oh no. And that's, that's the end of the episode. Sarah Jane has amazing boots when she goes into investigation mode. Um, yeah, those boots are. Oh, they're I'm, like knee high and incredible. Oh, I'm digging her whole outfit, Scott. I mean, if I'm remembering this correctly, uh, part one is where she's wearing like her baby blue, like dress, but then she has like a white bonnet, like a bonnet looking yeah. hat kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Good. It's that one. Yeah, um, yeah. 
No, it's great. She she kind of she's got a she's got a real Lois Lane thing going on this whole story, and I am in, into it. totally. I mean, like a really polite, a really polite, humble Lois Lane, like like, like not kind of so, so a British one, a British, yeah, saying. like not quite as brassy. <laughs> uh oh, hello. Oh, you, oh no, I'm 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 I just I just didn't care. Like no, like she she blackmails her way into this interview. Like, she's like, yeah. hey, Brigadier, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, get me into the think tank. And Brigadier's like, I don't care, go, fine. <laughs> Which is a horrible idea. It's like, yeah, go into our most secret place, where our darkest, like, yeah, just go, just go dig around, like, that building. And have no regard for, like, what is on limits or off limits. <laughs> um, it's, it's great. Sarah Jane is, is great in the story, but she has even more great things to do, uh, after this. But, uh, I want to I want to talk about let's go back to the beginning because I want to talk about the fact that like Brigadier okay none of these people none of them have experienced a regeneration before like they've never been around for a regeneration before and yet it's happening and the Brigadier is just like here we go again totally normal whatever <laughs> this is fine and like Sarah Jane's totally cool with it everybody's totally cool with it and I'm just like Guys, this is super weird. Like, maybe act like this is a little weird. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Like, I, I believe the Brigadier's line is, oh, at least I finally, at least I get to be around for this one. Right, right. But but he still says, he still dismisses it at the beginning by just going, oh, here we go again. Well, no, so, like, how did, how did, this, how did the third Doctor die? Was Did he just pass peacefully in his sleep? Like, why are they so chill? He was, he was, uh, it was like gas poison or something like that. You'll, you'll, you'll see in this final story. But yeah, it's like a gas poison. He was like, they laid him out on the floor. Um, and, and then he, he died. Uh, so what, what were the, uh, what were like the behind the scenes reasons? Was Pert Wee just done or was it in the story? Yeah, no, Pert Wee was just done, I think. Cause Pert Wee, cause the problem is what happened with, with Pert Wee is that, um, Delgado died and Delgado played the first master. Mm -hmm. And when Delgado died in a car wreck, John Pertwee was just like, I can't do this anymore. Cause they were like best friends. Uh. And like, mm -hmm. and, and so like when, when Delgado died in the car wreck, he was just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like I gotta, I gotta check out. I'm sorry guys. Like I just can't keep playing the doctor without my best friend. And so they, they, they wrote him out and got uh, Tom Baker in. Wow. Yeah. The rest is his. No, he, he, uh, Baker just comes out of the gate fully formed. And I was like, oh, this is why you're the icon. This is why you are the doctor to like, a gen like, you know, it's like him and then David Tennant, depending on who you ask, you know? Right. Well, or, or Matt, or Matt Smith. Smith. Yeah. There are definitely people who think Matt Smith is the most iconic doctor. Sure. And of course, there's no um, right answer. It's all about like, you know, how you were introduced to the show. But, you know, yeah, I, I, I think for like anyone under the over the age of like, like 35, I think it's definitely like, well, I mean, who knows? But, you know, Baker, ba let me put it this way. Like yeah. Tom Baker was the version of the doctor that appeared in The Simpsons. Right, exactly. Yeah, he's 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 most people's like like of of that generation, like Matt Groening's generation, mm -hmm. like he was the favorite because the Tom Baker episodes were the ones that played on PBS all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is this this is like the first American doctor was Tom Baker. I love the the opening sequence in this. It is so trippy and green mm. and like oh, yeah. like mid seventies and I, I just I love it. Yeah, no, it's really great. Um, I, <laughs> I also, I love the joke where, uh, like, first of all, I love that everyone just goes along with anything that Fourth Doctor does. Um, like, like the jumping, the 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 jump rope thing is the perfect example because, like, <laughs> why why is Harry jumping with him? Like, what what? It, I mean, like, what what's going through your head that you think, like, oh yeah, let's just let's jump together. That'll be fun. We're both grown men. Yeah. This would be great. It, it, it kind of, it is very reminiscent of Eleven in that like, you know, Baker's doctor is like this, this like kid that's surrounded by adults that have like zero patience for him. Or like even, even Sarah Jane, they're just like, stop. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> like breaking ears like over it already. Right. Well, but I will say I really liked the bit where 
uh, Brigadier is uh, so they take so after after the Doctor first wakes up, acts weird, and then falls back asleep. They take him away to the to the infirmary and then um, or the sick bay, whatever. And they have an argument about which word is <laughs> what the it correct is, yeah. word. Yeah, but yeah, so so the the sick bay and they 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 take him over there, and as soon as he's gone, like the second he's gone, the brigadier's just like, oh, I, I miss the doctor. You know, I really like having him around. He annoys me, but but you know, it's it's weird not having him here to help us out. And I'm just like. He just left, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I miss. <laughs> wow, I want to kiss him on the mouth. Yeah, even uh, more so than before. <laughs> um, oh, and we get we get his full name. Uh, I was like Brigadier. I mean, I was like Alabaster. Alistair Dumbledore. Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. <laughs> yep. oh, great, such a great name. Uh, I also, I love the joke where when the doctor comes out in the Viking outfit, which is the first outfit, uh, the, the Brigadier says, you've changed. And he goes, not again. No, no, no. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I love that joke because, because I love the idea of like, in, while he's changing outfits, he accidentally like trips and falls and kills himself. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I've, again, I've always but wanted, doesn't even notice that it happened. I've always wanted the show. Else points it out. I've always wanted the show to do that. Like have Tom Hiddleston be the doctor for like ten minutes, and then yeah. he just gets like vaporized or like something, and then immediately regenerates. Well, that's that. That's that joke in that uh, that that Stephen Moffat with <laughs> Rowan Atkinson Doctor Who special. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of that that Rowan Atkinson special, uh, Rowan Atkinson. Uh, dies and then regenerates and turns into um let me think it's it's the guy it's the guy um oh crap the guy from uh prince charles uh, no i forget what the guy's name is um anyway so he turns into one guy i forget the name of the guy it's it's the guy that was in that paul mcgann movie uh not not, the, not, <laughs> not your, movie, oh uh, with neil and not, i yeah yeah with neil and i it was the other guy the other so it was like Paul McGann and then the other Richard guy. E. I forget what the other guy's name. Yeah, Richard Grant. That's it. So so he he regenerates into Richard Grant and dies again and regenerates into uh dude from uh uh from uh crap. I'm forgetting everybody's name. The guy from Harry Potter six, um the the new teacher, the new defense of the ends of the dark arts. Oh, uh, Horace Luck and Jim Broadbent. Yeah, Jim Broadbent. Yep. Yes. So he he. he he regenerates in the Jim Broadbent, right? The companion who loves the doctor <laughs> for, first, like, falls in love with Rowan Atkinson, turns into Richard Grant. She's like, okay, I can roll with this. And then when he turns into, when he turns into Broadbent, she's like, oh, I don't, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. And he's just like, all right, I'll be right back. And then just like Hello. goes around the corner and, and dies again. I'm the doctor. And then, <laughs> and then comes back as Hugh Grant. Oh, uh, nice. And then, and then a doctor or a Dalek comes around the corner and zaps Hugh Grant, and then Hugh Grant dies, and then turns into the woman from Absolutely Fabulous. Oh, and that's how uh, Jennifer it, Saunders. It ends with the yeah, it ends with the doctor being the the chick from Absolutely Fabulous. That's awesome. So, yeah, Catherine Tate of her day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would kill for Jim. Um, Has Jim Broadbent been in in Doctor Who? I don't think so. I want him to be like a blustery like unit guy. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. No, cool. Doctor, we're going to do this by the point. And he's just like, amazing. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is, uh, I mean, that reminds me of his of his role on Hot Fuzz or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it, it actually, it's funny because I was watching this this time. And every time I saw the Brigadier, I was like, God, he just, he just reminds me of like Nick Frost character from Spaced. Oh, yeah. With the little beret and like the mustache. Yeah, the little beret <laughs> and the mustache. He's really militant. And, and there's that. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's that line in uh, in part four where he's just like, "Just once, I'd like to meet an alien menace that wasn't immune to bullets." <laughs> and that just that sounds like the kind of nonchalant line yeah. that that Nick Frost character from Space would say. You wouldn't think that that character is at all like aesthetically inspired by Brigadier, would you? I wouldn't be surprised at all. Because, because it... I mean, obviously Nick Frost is a fan of. <laughs> Because I know that the character came directly from Nick Frost. It was a Nick Frost character that he would just do around 
like when he was hanging out with right like the guy that knows everything about like guns and wilderness and stuff right so like it was just a character but i, I imagine that they he chose like the outfit he was probably just like i kind of want him to look like a casual brigadier you know because <laughs> like an awesome he's obviously a fan <laughs> yeah he was, father. he was in. I mean, he was he, he was just on the show last year. It was Father you know? Christmas. Right. He was the best part of that so, episode. He was the best part of that stupid episode. Part. He was the best part of that stupid episode. No way. I like um, I like the girl that danced. She was really nice. Oh yeah, she was she was alright too. Um, but yeah. So so the Viking doctor, he had a sword. You guys think it's a sonic sword? I'm thinking it was a sonic. Sword. I think it's a real <laughs> sword that he's used to murder humans. I think it was a sonic sword. Hello. Imagine a doctor funny. with a sonic sword. He just points it, points a huge like broadsword at things, ah! and then they. He just points a huge broadsword at a door, and it just opens. Well, there's a. It just looks like it opens out of fright. Uh, I, I, I hate to, I hate to keep bringing up stuff later, but he has a great sonic moment later on where they're like busting into the bad guys' like base. Oh and yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What like it's hard, and he just like drills into this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I also, it's so funny because, um, and this is just this doesn't have anything necessarily to do with Doctor Who, but uh, specifically, but it was just something that I noticed because it, it's referenced here. But like, there's that scene where uh, he's sitting in the in the jeep uh, with 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 Briggs and 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 Harry, and they're and they're talking about the impregnable. Uh, vault. Oh yeah, and and he's like, oh, I don't like the word impregnable. It it reminds me of uh, of the Titanic or whatever. And oh, no, it, reminds, it reminds me of unsinkable. Uh, yeah, yeah, unsin- yeah. Impregnable is a lot like unsinkable. And then and then he's just like, what's wrong with that? And he's like, oh, said the said the iceberg to the Titanic. And and I it it's such a weird reference because the ti- like Titan the Titanic has become a pop culture reference now. But at the time, he was making a historical reference, and I always have to remember stuff like that because I'm just so used to like <laughs> when people reference the Titanic, they're actually referencing the movie mm-hmm. to the point where there's all of those um, when the anniversary uh, back in in what was that 2011 20 yeah 2011 right because it was 1911 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right um, in 2011 when they did the 100 year anniversary of Titanic. You would there was that meme going around of all the comments of people just being like, "Wait, this was real?" <laughs> yeah, because they didn't even know yeah, that, that it was. So at the time, that was kind of an obscure reference. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And then uh, there's this other kind. Of, he's kind of he's very Bugs Bunny uh, in this episode, but uh, there's um yeah, because he kept he would keep doing that thing where he would like flop his legs up. Oh yeah, just like he owned like he would like well after he said like said the iceberg to the Titanic, and then he just like props his legs up on the dashboard. And then the brigadier's like, you know, this base is protected from left, right, and up. And he goes, well, that leaves one direction. And then he just, like, slowly points <laughs> down. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be pretty great if, uh, it'd be pretty great if Tom, if they just had Tom Baker just, like, jamming on a carrot at some point. Yeah. This episode. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that so much. Just, he looks like an, he looks well, like a stoner on, he, uh... he looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Later on, he wants like a a um, a talking head of like cabbage to be his companion. Oh, that's right. I forget. He looks like a <laughs> Ralph right. Bashke drawing come to life. He does. He really does. I I uh, but 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 he's 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 a great visual. But let's talk about like maybe the greatest visual. Uh, in in this entire story, Elizabeth, which is Professor, which is Professor Kettlewell's everything. Oh, Professor, oh. let's just talk. Let's just talk about Professor Kettlewell's everything. No, prof- no, pro- <laughs> Professor Kettlecorn is one of the most magical <laughs> beings I've ever <laughs> seen on a TV show. <laughs> he's he's spectacular. Oh he looks God, like he he looks like a children's video game character that teaches you math. He. He looks like he looks like an aging, uh, like he looks like the the professor that like invents Mega Man, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Mega Man. It's yeah. Oh man, it's it's pretty spectacular. I I 
I don't know whose idea it was for him to look like that, but it's it's incredible. Because he's he's um, bald, but he also has an excess of like back like like back of his head. I don't know what you call that, but you know how like kind of the bald the center is bald. But he has so much in the back. Yeah. And it's just like and, he, and rather than comb it over, he just sticks it straight up. I would be into more people covering up the fact that they're bald by doing that. Like surprising you more than the coma where you look like, like the bad guy from Tekken. Oh god, that'd be amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm on board for more people. Doing oh yeah, that. yeah, because like oh, because like uh, yeah, so they find out that like this this coot, you know, this crank, whatever, you know, whatever, what have you, like that was his secret room. That that um, right. he was like, I've developed living metal. It grows, <laughs> and they're like, oh, gee. <laughs> think tank. Uh. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't revealed uh living metal quite yet. Okay. But um but but yeah, it's he's amazing. I I can't I can't get enough of Kettlewell. He's the best. Um but uh yeah, the other thing uh, too I just wanted to mention about Tom Baker is that I find it really interesting the situation that he's in at this point. Like the, because, the actor or the character? Yeah, the actor, okay. the actor, because the situation that he's in is that, I mean, Sarah Jane has only been around for like a year on the show, maybe like six months. Mm-hmm. I, for, I forget. Uh, she came in at some point, the just the previous season. And I think it's really interesting that Brigadier has been on the show as a regular character since Spearhead from Space, you know, that last episode that we watched. Mm-hmm. But that was four years ago in the show. And so this guy has had has been a regular character on this show for four years and has been a supporting character to John Pertwee this entire time. And then the show recast the lead, and now he's under this new main guy who's never been on the show before. And I just find that to be like, like Tom Baker has to come in and like, he's owning all of these scenes. And I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine the actors not being sort of annoyed by him. <laughs> at least at first. Sure. Where it's like this guy. Yeah. Where it's just like, come on, bro. Like we've been doing this for four years. Like, I just imagine like at some point that, uh, that, that, uh, the Nicholas, L- Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Courtney, like taking, uh, taking the, like Tom Baker aside and just like kind of telling them how it is. And then Tom Baker just being like, oh yeah, thanks for the advice. And then just doing the exact opposite in the scene and just pissing him off. <laughs> like it just, it just doesn't feel like, like it feels like Tom Baker just came in and immediately, and said, "This is my show now." Yeah, no, it it he just he's owning every and it's it's you know to his credit his chemistry with you know uh, with Sullivan and the Brigadier and Sarah. I mean, he's not he's not with Sarah Jane too much in in this series in the special, but um, but yeah, no, his chemistry with the, all of them is so effortless and already you know it's kind of like um when you first see like Amy Pond and Eleven in in the eleventh hour, and you're like, oh, I could watch this for forever and we we weren't right right, but like at the time it it felt right right i can i will watch this for two years and then it'll keep going for three (laughs) um all right tell us about part two i'd love to so uh when we last left sarah jane she was being attacked by uh this big dumb robot and um (laughs) so she's like oh robot so she goes back to uh the guy the word, you know, the guy and the girl, and they're like, "Oh, don't worry, it was just a joke, just a practical joke." We 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 heard you mentioning that you wanted to meet a robot, so I I thought it would be I thought it would be funny if I turned the robot on and like had it say that it was going to kill you. <laughs> and Sarah Jane's like, "Okay," and they're like, "Yeah, this is <laughs> this is K one." Uh, it's supposed to like they built this robot. Well, you know, I don't know. Did they say that Professor Kettlecorn built this yet? Like, do we know that? 
Yeah, Kettle, Kettlewell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So Cobblepot built this robot to <laughs> ultimately replace humans in <laughs> carrying out hazardous activities like mining and handling stuff. And so uh, then they um, decide to like, well, you know, Sarah asks some very base level questions like, how does it work? Is it safe? And Winters is like, is it safe? Kill this woman. Kill this woman right now. Lock the door. And the guy like locks the door. And the robot's like, no, I can't. Uh, uh, Asimov's laws. Uh, and he's like just spazzing, just spazzing out. And they're like, see, it's it's fine. The robot, um, uh, it's fine. So uh, the robot is can't actually kill people because there's like a directive. And so, um, Sarah, can you hear me, Scott? Yeah. So Sarah is like, sort I was, I was trying to do, th- I, was, I was trying to do this sneakily, and then you're just like bringing attention to it happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead, keep going. So Sarah uh, is like scorning uh, the scientist. Like, why would you do that? It's like, you know, because, you know, you hurt the robot, you, you confused it, and they're like, look, dude, it's it's a hunk of metal. Like, the robot doesn't feel anything, but Sarah's like, well, I'm Sarah Jane, everything is, it deserves respect, so you can all piss. And so she leaves, and uh, Jellicle Cat and uh, Winters, uh, like like, tinker around with the robot, and, the, and you know, Winters is like, why would you do that? Uh, no, no, wait, no, no. Jellico is the guy. Winters is the woman, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Okay, she's great. She's a great villain. Uh, we didn't. She's a really great villain. She only gets better. Like she, she only sinks more and more into it as as we go. Oh yeah. So she just becomes full on. She just becomes full on like Indiana Jones, like Nazi lady. Yeah, like she's like leading a cult weirdly. Yeah. Um. So, um, Team Rocket show K one. Uh, a picture of uh i was kind of getting a team rocket vibe because they weren't like they were kind of like sibling ish but also like it was weird they were a weird combo um so they show k1 a picture of the prime uh of cabinet minister joseph chambers and they're like hey this guy's a bad man k1 you need to disintegrate him uh so sarah like goes back to unit and is like hey they have a robot and like they like jokingly sent it to kill me like twice and just go go to this weird stuff is going on at think tank um and so they go to uh they send sullivan to think tank to uh gather more information because the brigadier is like well i can't just call unit and because you know you ace reporter sarah jane smith saw a robot uh so they go to uh dr kettlecorn's apartment and he's like no uh, but then he, in a really charming scene, he he dislikes everyone but the doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like they, they bond over both being old and weird. And uh, meanwhile, K one uh, is out on his mission to destroy, and he murders uh, Joseph Chambers, and uh, they uh, find out that. Uh, They find out that uh, all of this is a part of some kind of weird think tank fringe group called the Scientific Reform Society, um, which is like advocating. It's kind of it's 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 almost kind of like Bioshock is there like, you know, the scientific elite will take over society. Yeah, it it is a little Bioshock. It's like um, it's it's definitely got like an an Ayn Rand kind of thing so so the the so the scientific reform society they are part of think tank yeah i think and so. think tank i just, I just want to make sure i'm getting the <laughs> the mythology right so think tank is like was formed by unit or with unit or is it completely separate from unit something like that i think i think i think unit like kind of sponsors it or something okay i don't know and so yeah maybe like they're like pixar and think and and uh and units like disney <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah or kind of like marvel disney um yeah, so, yeah something like that yeah so you know so so jellicle cat and winters are part of this fringe group 
Meanwhile, <laughs> K1 arrives at Dr. Kettlewell's lab, and he's like, Dad, 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 I had to kill a human. Dad, it was scary. Dad, Dad. And <laughs> <laughs> it's... Okay, I guess now's a good time to talk about K one is 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 a is an act of is a is a is a pure creation. He's a, he's a cinnamon roll. Um, <laughs> he is just angry <laughs> and loud and confused and emotional, and he makes Kylo Ren look like Mr. Miyagi. Like that's how <laughs> oh, that's man. how un, that's how unbalanced this guy is. So he's like, Dad, I don't want to do it, Dad. And um, I mean so like. So meanwhile, they're like talking that talk to um, Brigadier and the Doctor. They're like, the K-1's been disassembled, but the Doctor's like, oh, you're lying. And Winters is like, I know that you know I'm lying. And the Doctor's like, I know that you know that I know that you're lying. And Brigadier's like, shut up. And so <laughs> they send they send Sullivan. Sullivan, pretend to be a medical inspector. And he's like, ah. Oh. And so uh, in his lab, the Doctor receives uh, a phone call from Professor Popcorn and... Uh, he goes to <laughs> meet him, but instead, uh, in the place of Professor Kettlewell, is K-1, and he karate chops um, Tom Baker in the head, and uh, the episode ends, and the wiki describes this as, he raises his arm to deliver the coup de gras. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. K-1's about to I- deliver the coup de gras to the doctor when part two ends. I love... That this robot's name is K1 just because we know that K9 is down the line. Yeah, it's almost like this is like K K9's like older brother. Right, and he looks kind he's kind of designed like K9, because I imagine it was the same there was like it was like the same guys like working on costumes yeah. and props well, it's, and it's, creature designs. It's and stuff. it's sort of yeah. like well, both K9 and K1 are both like what a child thinks a robot looks like. <laughs> yeah, totally. It, it's yes. it's a very innocent, like whiz bang Saturday morning like cartoon design, which is amazing because like what the emotional journey that K one goes through is like something out of a like you know Cassavetti's movie. It's so he, he it for uh, for such a gentle creature, K one really has a lot of inner turmoil. <laughs> it's so good, Dad. He's like no humans. Ah, ah, he, and it gets even better. It's spectacular. <laughs> every every everything about everything about him is spectacular. Yes. And uh, um, Sullivan proving himself to be really useful. You know, he's 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 the perfect companion combination where he's not a kiss ass, but he's down. You know, he's yeah. like, hey, this is weird, but I'll help you out because you don't have you noticed that the doctor doesn't like companions that are too forward. Yeah, well, he doesn't like guys who are too forward. Yeah, it freaks him out. <laughs> yeah, he likes he likes when he likes when women are are forward. He does not like it when men are. He's like, huh? Yeah, yeah. He, you he, can't you can't come he, you can't come to the party with Harry, us. Yeah, Harry reminds me of someone. Um, it, it like some kind of British character in something reminds me a lot of Harry, just in the way that he's just like, you know what it, you know what it is? I know exactly who it is. He reminds me of Veruca Salt's dad. Oh lord, <laughs> I love Veruca. Just like, 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 like I feel like he, like, he, just the way that he talks to the doctor sometimes, where he kind of like takes him aside. It's just like. It's just like now. Look here, Doctor. You're like we we both know that all of this is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is, is a lot like well, is a lot like the way he takes Wonka aside. Come on, Wonka like, Now we all know that there's there's a price. Like, come on, how much do these goose gooses cost? I don't think you stop understand how much money I have. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> well, oh, <we're>, like he's <laughs> totally. That's what he reminds me of. Is Veruca Salt's dad? He, totally. He's like, come on, you're this is a, this is bull. This is BS, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 oh. Why do you keep doing that thing with your nose? Oh, no, it means that I'm silly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so the gang is very. Um, it's, it's like it's like seeing like the Fast and Furious family like get together, which kind of makes me sad because this is um kind of this this is the last time that the Brigadier is a uh, is a main character on the show. Yeah. Right. Correct. Um. I am not crazy about Sarah Jane's second outfit. 
uh, this thing with the weird scarf on her. Oh, head. I like the I scarf thing. I think it's a weird um, companion to uh, Four Scarf. That's it's like their scarf. That's weird. It's like their scarf I, bros. Yeah, yeah. scarf bro fair. <laughs> but yeah, I I I will say it really freaked me out when she went. And uh, it, when, when she references how um, she's going to write about the SRS uh, in an article about uh, about about like different like science groups or whatever. And she was like, yeah, I'll, t- I'll talk about you like right next to the flat earthers. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. Nothing's changed. That's still a thing. Yeah. Those people still exist. Oh, God. <laughs> now, it's, now it's B.O.B. Oh. Uh. That's rough. It's a rough time. It's a rough time. Um, also, uh, did we, did you talk about the fact that Kettlewell reveals that he based K one's uh, AI on himself? Yeah. Yes. He's just he's just he just programs. He's just like, oh well. I mean, he's a good person because I based him on me, and I'm a good person. So. <laughs> and everyone's just like. Oh yeah, that checks out. That's fine. It could best be described as chaotic neutral, so I figured that was a good place for a robot to go. <laughs> <laughs> also, I just realized that his name is K One because his his dad's name is Kettlewell. Is Kettle, Kettlewell. Oh yeah. my god. Um, I don't. I, <laughs> god, jeez, I I just he's a little overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> you, so K One's a total daddy's boy. Uh. Yeah. He he really looks to Doctor Popcorn for like advice and <laughs> and wisdom and like I can't imagine a worse a worse person to like receive basic like fundamental human knowledge from. It's like <laughs> he might as well be talking to like Ludwig like the the Disney cartoon duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Oh God! And uh, and that that bit where where when uh, she's talking when when Sarah Jane is talking to the to to the uh, the SRS dude and trying to get into the club meeting, and he she just like uh, he she's like trying to get information about how their club works, and and you know the club is the the science reform society. The club, like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's the science reform society, but. He's like, yeah, no, we would tell you how to think and what to think and when to think because it's for your own good. And I'm like, what does that have to do with science? What are you talking about, man? Yeah, I don't like, get I don't get what th- Also, your leader's a woman. Where's all this sexist stuff coming from? I don't it's, I don't understand any no, of it. No, the, the the SRS, or the Scientific Reform Society makes little to no sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like um Plato's Republic but for science instead of like philosophers and artists. Yeah. It's like they're, they, they, they dream of like an Elysium where they can just science all over each other, like all yeah. day, but yeah. it has to involve like, ex, like, ex, like exterminating humanity. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's bizarre. Uh, all right, let's go into episode three. Okay. Uh, so, so part three begins with, possibly the longest recap in the history of the series <laughs> um the the thing about the thing about classic who because each episode is uh is done you know weekly uh for the mo- for the most of the run of the of the show um what they do this thing where they re- they usually recap the last like 5 or 10 seconds of the previous episode at the beginning of the next episode, it also many times it allows them to do some kind of editing trick so that when you thought that the doctor couldn't get out of the situation that he was in at the end of the of the previous episode, you go to the beginning of the next episode and you edit it in such a way where suddenly there's a way out and there was always a way out. Oh, I'm holding a gun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that happens all the time. Uh, but so, so here though, we get the recap that is normally a five or 10 second recap. Like normally the recap would begin with him getting knocked on the head and then the coup, the coup de gras, the coup de gras. Like, gras. <laughs> yeah. But instead this one begins with the doctor walking into the room again, which is like a two minute sequence. Uh, no, where he walks I- into the room. 
I was getting up to like get some water and I thought that it had like restarted. I, 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 I lost like <laughs> two minutes because I'm like, it's, oh, oh no, the other one. Wait, what? Yeah, no, it's so long. It's ridiculous. Um, so, so it's two minutes of, so the, the, I want to, I just, I just wrote down what happens in the scene because it's kind of all absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I love classic who is like, it's just all in these two minutes. So the doctor walks into the room cause he, he had gotten that letter to meet uh, or that note or whatever. The, that wait, message you, wait, I don't want to talk over the letter, but that is an incredible letter. It's like, yeah. dear Sarah Jane and Brigadier, I went off without you. Don't worry about me. Unless, of course, I wrote a letter. Unless, of, but, then, but then I would just find a way out of it. Unless, of course, you're reading this letter because that means that I left it and you can read it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it, it, it keeps going. And Elizabeth is yeah. like, that, that stupid guy. Oh, I hate, like. <laughs> He's so dumb. <laughs> um. So so he gets a message to go meet uh it, kettle corn, right? <laughs> yeah. And so 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 he goes to meet kettle corn, but then the but then the the his office or his lab or whatever you would call that that room with the desk his hideaway. Um, his grotto. Yeah, he he goes to meet him and he's and he's gone. It's like an empty room. But then but then K K1 shows up and K1 is like I've been told that I have to kill you. Like if you're the doctor, are you the doctor? And he's like, yeah, of course I'm the doctor. And he's like, okay, great. I'm going to kill you. Please don't Um, move to to minimize pain. Right. Please don't move. So he starts swinging for him. (laughs) So then the doctor in a series of, in his, in his series of escapes from K1's murder clause, he, (laughs) he rolls out of the way of K1's first swing and and does like a just like a barrel roll over the desk. And then he rolls onto the other side of the desk, right? Then he finds some marbles just laying around and then throws them at K1's feet as if it's going to trip him up. Well, that doesn't work because he's a he's like a two-ton <laughs> robot and marbles aren't going to do anything. So then so then there's there happens to be two pillars in the room, so he takes off his scarf and ties ties the the, the scarf between the two p- pillars in plain sight of K one slowly shuffling towards him. <laughs> and then K one, rather than walking between the pillars, just punches one of the pillars to the ground. Uh. <laughs> and so, hey. so then the doctor's just like, "All right, well, that's done." So then he runs over to a chain that just happens to be hanging from the ceiling and he throws the chain at K1 and K1 just sort of knocks that out of the way. And he's like, all right, well, that doesn't work. So then he sneaks up to K1 and just puts his hat over his face. (laughs) No. And then that seems to work. That seems to like quiet down K1 and he's just like, oh, okay, good. And then that's when K1 hits him on the head. It's so good. Like, oh, it's, it's, it is, it's just a spectacular two minutes. <laughs> just an absolutely spectacular two minutes of Classic Who. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find that scene and post it on our Twitter or something so everybody can watch it. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, so, so, okay. So then that brings us into. That brings us through the recap of part of part the end of part two. And now we're in part and three. And then Right, now we're in part three. So 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 the doctor is unconscious on the floor. K one is is raising his arm to like presumably murder the doctor. And then we cut to Sarah Jane and she's she's driving in to, to find the doctor after getting his letter. And so she comes in there just as K one is gonna kill the doctor and she's she gets in the way and she's like, no, no, don't do it. And Kaywood's like, oh, I remember you. You cared about you me. And she's like, yeah, nest. totally. Yeah. She's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, totally. I did care about you. That was me. And, and Kaywood's like, oh, well. <laughs> right. So, so K1 is basically like, well, I can't, I can't hurt you. And if you're in the way of the doctor, then I can't hurt the doctor. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so then the robot's like, okay, I'm Audi 5000. And then he... He goes, he goes, he goes to the door and, and waiting for him outside is like the entire like unit army force. 
waiting for. Presumably every and gun in Great outside. Britain is pointed at K1. Right, basically. So so he comes out the door and he breaks the door down. He struggles a little bit because he gets stuck in the door. He gets stuck a lot, um, guys. Yeah, he does get stuck a lot. Now, what I can only – okay, so do you remember that movie Be Kind Rewind? Of course. Yeah, the movie Be Kind Rewind, which is a which is a Michel Gondry movie, and it's about Jack Black and uh, most death. Yassine Bay, right? Sure, uh, I'm pretty sure he's credited as most death and everything. I know. <laughs> um, so, 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 so Jack Black gets like he has like a magnet. He gets a magnet in his head or something, and he he works in a video store and he fries all the videos in the in the video store. And then he and most deaf because they they count on the income of the video store decide to remake every movie in the video store uh, and and rent out their like their their what they call sweeted remakes of uh, of these movies so they like remake Ghostbusters for like five dollars you know driving Miss Daisy and. Right, driving Miss Daisy for like two dollars, and so so like they make these super cheap remakes of these movies to sell them or to rent them out at this video store to make up for the fact that he ruined all of them. The sequence that plays in which in which K one is is bursting out of the front out of the door and then walking toward unit, I can only describe as a sweeted version. Of the scene in Iron Man when Tony <laughs> is breaking out of the cave in the Mark One outfit, and just all of these it's people a- are just shooting at K One, and he's just so sad. <laughs> but he's also super chill about it because he's just taking them out. It's it's literally, I mean, that's what it is. It's just it's the scene from Iron Man, uh, only done on like a like a like a fifty dollar budget, which it probably was. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, yeah, well, yeah no, it's it's absolutely it's incredible. It's just like it's like instead of terrorists, it's, it's unit, <laughs> and instead of Iron Man, it's K one. It's it's K one. Can you imagine how boned the Avengers would be if instead of Iron Man, they just had K one? Uh, <laughs> well, it's kind of like Ultron. Ultron. I mean, the Marvel Universe would have never. <laughs> yeah, seen yeah, Ultron is actually a lot like K one. Yeah, <laughs> they're both emo as shit. They're both- <laughs> <laughs> So they both have really um, weird relationships with their dads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so then speaking of his dad, so so they find uh they they find Kettle One uh Kettle. at <laughs> at at uh, they find me yeah, at Professor Kettle One <laughs> at uh at Unit Headquarters and Sarah Jane. He's just like, oh, it's you. You're 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 okay. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I to make up <laughs> for the him. understatement of the year. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, he and then and then he he puts a a a shotgun uh over the mantle uh, made of living metal, um, which uh becomes important later. Sure, because as we learned in part one, his specialty was what uh Winters calls like alternative technologies. Yeah. Right, exactly. So then, then whatever the uh, hell that. So means. Sarah Jane, <laughs> so Sarah Jane leaves with with Kettle One, and uh, and and they they go on they 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 go off together uh, to go figure out what the the SRS are doing. Oh, my girlfriend, um, because now. because he claims that 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 he's on on her side, and they're having a convention. He's like, I can get you in the convention, and you can get evidence for what you need to shut them down. And she's like, Awesome, cool. I'm a journalist. Um, and so they go off. And then as they run off, uh, the doctor and the brigadier come back. And they're talking about how uh, – so they, they go off. And they're like, oh, where's Sarah Jane? And then Benton walks in with a tray of tea. <laughs> <laughs> He's just holding a tray of tea. Benton, one of the unit soldiers, he just walks in holding the tray of tea. And he's and they're like, Where where's Sarah Jane? He's like, Oh yeah, he went out she went off with Kettle One and and they're just like they're like, He went off she went off with Kettle One, we have to go. And then they, they, they he runs off and then it's just Benton and the Brigadier. And Benton is just it's literally like a like a like a three, four minute scene between the doctor and and Brigadier and and and, 
and Benton is just standing in the background holding the tray of tea. Yeah. Like, just chilling in the background, <laughs> like, just holding the tray of tea. This is what, it's incredible. This is what the director oh my told God. me to do. He just told me to stand here in the shot <sighs> with the tea tray. It's, it's spectacular because, like, there is – I don't – I mean, I, I'm not sure – you, there, there's only one other like cup, like cup wing that I ship more than the Brigadier and Benton. <laughs> like the Brigadier and Benton are my jam. Like I just love them, and they just, they just act like an old married couple in the scene. Because <laughs> Benton's just like holding the tree, like oh, I just brought tea for your friend, yeah, for you and your friend. You're not even gonna talk to me. You're, not even, you're gonna pretend like I'm not in the room. <laughs> you talk to your you friend, the doctor. <sighs> Oh god, it's spectacular. It's so good. Um so then uh so then they go to the Nazi convention, uh the <laughs> SRS convention. And and uh you know, like you, they're shouting and doing doing Hitler things and then uh they bring out they bring out Kettleman and Kettleman is like, "Hey, uh by the way, I I I brought I brought the the girl." And they're just like they're just like, "Yeah, great." And Sarah Jane's just like, "Rut row." <laughs> he betrayed me. Um, and then just as that happens and they, they grab her, uh, the doctor shows up with unit and he just walks out on stage and, and can do, I mean, I, 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 I'm just from now on, I'm just going to start calling the fourth doctor, the comedy king of distraction, because that's the only way I can describe what he does. No, he, he starts he doing just, bits. Yeah. He just walks out on stage and starts doing bits and like really hokey bits, like where he pulls out like the the stack of cards and then just starts like 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 dangling like the thing where like the the stream of cards is like attached, but he brings them out like that. <laughs> yeah. So like he brings them out like that and then just like raises them up and shows them and just like look at this, right? <laughs> and like the weirdest thing is that it he's getting laughs. They like yeah, he's they love him. Laughs. He does like a ten minute like 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 cat skill set, and they just can't get these yeah. Nazis can't get enough of it. Uh, and then unit breaks in, and and that like sort of like ends the convention. And um, uh, Nazi Nazi lady, uh, Mrs. Not <laughs> Mister and Mrs. Nazi, they take uh, <laughs> they take Sarah Jane and run out the side door with 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 Kettle One, and um. So they so they 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 leave and then unit like disperses every like arrests everybody or whatever that's in there, and then uh, the brigadier gets a phone call from Sullivan, who's doing his own thing this whole time, and he gets a phone call on the biggest cell phone you'll have ever seen. I mean, this is this is nineteen seventy four. So if you if you remember what mobile phones look like in the eighties, this is three times that size. Like. It is it is bigger than like two brigadier heads. <laughs> like it is, it is gigantic. Like this thing is is obnoxiously large. Um, and then uh, he's talking to him, and then like Harry gets knocked on the head by some 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 other SRS Nazis, and uh, and 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 brigadier thinks that the phone gets cut, and he's just like, ah, oh, crap, crap crap mobile phone i'm like what are you talking about crap this thing's amazing are you is this 1974 and that isn't connected to anything this is amazing technology <laughs> whatever it's probably giving you brain cancer but it's amazing <laughs> um and and, then, and like immediately the doctor she just, he's just like oh the phone got cut off or and then he's like or harry got hit on the head am i right and I'm just, <laughs> he just looks at him like all right th- the the comedy king of distraction routines over. He's like, dead. <laughs> he's, yeah, probably dead. Um, and then, and then, and then, uh, 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 the doctor puts together a carpool, um, an Uber ride as they're they're heading over to the to the to this missile station because the SRS are going to use these missile codes to like blow up everybody and then be like the best ever. It's a lot like the plan that they have in Kingsman. Yeah, no, it's like, we're like, we have the act, we have the nuclear codes, we have the, yeah, the detonators and we're just going to kill stupid people. And only, you know, only the members of the SRS will be left standing. It's actually kind of an epic scheme for Dr. Who. 
It is. The only problem with it, though, is that there's only two women in the whole group. Yeah. I mean, I didn't say they were smart. I just said this was ep- – I mean, like, this, this, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the stakes are unusually high. Normally it's like, oh, uh, Donna. I don't know. Like, the, 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 it, it's, such a, it's such a standard blockbuster plot for this show. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so they, they're outside the place with the, with the missile, with the, like the missile launching place. And, uh, the, the four, four is driving Bessie and it looks like a micro machine. Like it looks like not even a micro machine. It looks like one of those, um, what are the power wheels? It looks like a power, like a micro machine. (laughs) Yeah. It looks like, it looks like power, a power wheels when the fourth doctor is driving it. Like the third doctor looks great in Bessie. But the fourth doctor looks like he's driving around a power wheels. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty great. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, so they, they, they surround the, the missile silo place and, uh, they're going to set up the, ca- they're, they're setting up the countdown and then they send K1 out to go take care of business. <laughs> and, uh, and K1 comes out and, uh, and he comes out and it's just like the doctor's like, well, I mean, we all remember how well this went last time, <laughs> and, and and then and then from Brigadier, and this is one of my favorite cliffhangers I think of all time. The Brigadier goes, "Oh, don't worry, I brought uh, something extra special to take care <laughs> yeah. of him." Cut to cut to a toy tank driving into the <laughs> foreground. <laughs> <laughs> with the sound effects of the largest tank you've ever heard, <laughs> but it's obviously just a Hot Wheels tank driving it like super close to the camera, and then K1 turns toward it with his with his his lim- limpy toy gun. <laughs> it's just and it's just like it's there's some there's obviously something wrong with the K1 costume because like his gun is just like limp, like it's just limp, <laughs> like just hanging off of his arm like like somebody snapped it like he has a broken wrist or something and and he just like lazily points it toward the toy tank and then fries it and then it's just like and now i'm coming for you guys no (laughs) even the tank that's the cliffhanger oh god it's so good that toy tank is amazing there's so much to love in this story oh my god (laughs) oh my god so good. You know, Scott, uh, a, a few weeks ago on not writing, I believe, uh, you were you were asking me like how I can see as many movies as I do. You know, mm-hmm. like why do I see movies like Gods of Egypt or, uh, you know, uh, Ride Along? You know, <laughs> sure. And I, I, I don't think I don't think I would have given you crap about Ride Along. Sure. But all right. Um, <laughs> but I, it's because I think. You know, when I watch, quote, like, bad movies, the right ones, a lot of them have moments like, like, K1's weird, limp laser gun for me, <laughs> where it's, everything's just so magical and accidental, and, like, you know, they didn't, they- I just, I don't get the, I don't get the same, I guess I don't get the same feeling from modern that I stuff. get from this, because, yeah, because this is, like, they didn't have any other resources. Like they're just doing the best they can on their super low budget. Right. Whereas like a movie like Gods of Egypt is just like it's a bunch of white people pretending to be Egyptian and they've got a two hundred million dollar budget and it's still garbage. Well, and I, I just... will I okay. I will say <laughs> I, when I sat down to see Gods of Egypt, what what played out in front of me, the last thing on my mind was the whitewashing. Like it, and I don't know what the hell they were like. It's like they might as well call Egypt in this movie like Narnia or like Eternia. It's like a completely right. fantasy world. Like, right? It, oh, I, don't, I don't even know why they call it Gods of Egypt. It should have called it just like Ra Ra <laughs> Ra Children. I don't know. Children of Ra. <laughs> children of Ra. Children of Ra. Ra Ra Ra. ra, ra. <laughs> If they had named that movie Ra Ra Riot, I would have been there opening day. And the poster is just Jeffrey Rush, like in like an Austin oh Powers my pose. Oh god, that would have been a ma- Ra Ra Riot. Are you serious? 
And the poster is just a like just a silhouette of a dude in the sun. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> from, from the director of <laughs> iRobot, The Crow, and a No. Rah, 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 <laughs> rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Gerard Butler. The brother from Oculus. <laughs> oh God. Electra oh, from Daredevil. That would have been. Oh amazing. my goodness. Uh, but yeah, no, this the 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 Hot Wheels tank and the limp like just the combination of like the back to back Hot Wheels tank and the limp limp la- <laughs> like limp hand laser gun is just like wow. I think like I- just I think amazing. I think every facet of K1's design is a failure. Aww. <laughs> I I I don't think a thing about this robot works the way that it, he was designed to. I I'll tell you what does work. I want to give him a hug. Oh yeah, no. He's he's kind of like the Charlie Brown of robots. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine like what if there was a what if there was a a, a Doctor Who theme park? <laughs> And like one of like the mascots just walking around was K one. How amazing would that? <laughs> and he was just screaming. He's just. You know who he is? Do you guys watch Adventure Time? Yeah. He's no. he he he's Lemon Grab. Oh my gosh, he's, that's so he's funny. Just, <laughs> he's just an angry, confused like sociopath <laughs> that hates everyone but just wants to be loved. <laughs> Oh, no. oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh god. Alright, well, tell tell us about part four. Alright, so they um they start the nuclear countdown and it countdowns from like three hundred. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Um so Harry and uh Sarah Jane managed to escape because they're like tied to like tied down here in this nuclear bunker whatever um and um professor uh kettlewell has a change of heart um and he's like what am i doing oh my god and he like stops the the clock like with like a minute to go um and there's like people are just like what are you doing oh my god and sarah like breaks free and she like tries to reason with the robot um because he's just like camped out in front of the the bunker door trying to shoot at unit um and she's like no no you know she t- pulls like a whole like tarzan and jane kind of thing like whatever like um, an iron giant Hogarth. there's a there's a yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of uh stuff that this is doing that's a lot of like because it's like you got like a beauty and the beast kind of thing yeah or like king kong uh, be- later like <laughs> yeah you got king kong later there's definitely a tarzan and jane thing too yeah like a lot That's of weird. They're referencing a lot of things. It's weird. Um, <laughs> um, so she's trying to reason with the robot, and the robot like shoots like wildly at the unit, but the professor is there, so he shoots the professor, and he freaks out. He's like, ah, oh. uh, "No, no, no, okay, okay." So, so, so the doctor walks out, and he's like, "I have to kill you. You have to run." Like, because he's like, he's like, "I can't help but shoot, so you have to go." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or to to Sarah Jane. Because he's like, I don't want to kill you because you're awesome and, and I kind of I kind of want to hook up later. <laughs> All I like, am gotta, is You got to go. You got to go because I have to kill something. It's going to happen. You got to get out of the way. And then and then the professor shows up. He's like, no, no, no. And he kills the professor. And then he goes, he just, he's like, no, I killed my dad. And then just <laughs> collapses. He just collapses into depression. He can't even. He can't even. I um, killed that what created me. Yeah. And then he just like. I, I, like he just, just falls over into depression. Like <laughs> it's. It's incredible. And then the unit's like I guess close in. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's just crying into the grass. Because <laughs> he just disintegrated his. He just super destroyed his dad. <laughs> he super destroyed his dad. Uh, so they There's like confiscate n- the gun and like Mrs. Nazi is in the bunker still so she starts the countdown again um, and unit moves in and they arrest them and they're just like oh you know the doctor saves the day and it's like so funny because every like it's counting down and he's the doctor manages to stop the computer with like two seconds to go but the camera just like is constantly like zooming in it's like eight 
so it's like the cheesiest New Year's Eve countdown like ever. Mm-hmm. Um and uh yeah. So like the robot like manages to get free and Sarah runs into it and they cut later and the doctor's like, Man, where's Sarah Jane? She's she's missing again and they're like, Oh yeah, the robot disappeared and we just assumed Sarah Jane went home and he's like, Are you stupid? What are you talking about? He's like, What do you mean went home? Yeah. <laughs> We just we literally just finished. How is she home? Um, so the robot has Sarah Jane hostage in this like weird bunker, um, and he he's just like, "Oh, you're you're nice to me. I'm not gonna hurt you, but I'm gonna hurt everyone else because humans are garbage." And she's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Machines <laughs> don't lie. Yeah, humans lie, but you are nice. <laughs> humans lie <laughs> is what he's deduced through all of this. <laughs> Poor dude. Um, <laughs> and the doctor he murdered and the his father is dead. <laughs> I'm his dad. You're my new mom now. <laughs> You're my mommy and my girlfriend. You're all I have. Dang. You're all I have in the world. Who out there can love you more than I? Oh. <laughs> uh. So Unit is still out there trying to figure out what to do about the robot that has Sarah Jane like hostage now. Um, and Benton uh, says that, oh yeah, the professor mentioned he had these weird metal-eating virus things that he invented when he invented living metal. Um, and he is so he is so pleased with himself. He's just like sitting there smiling for like five seconds, and the brigadier is like, "Hey, stop that!" And he's like, "Oh, okay." And so <laughs> the doctor runs off to go do science, and like they in a bucket in a bucket, yeah. It's the most he's gonna go do thing. he's gonna go do bucket science. <laughs> he does science, and um. The robot is so distressed. He's like, oh, my dad wanted to blow up the earth, so I guess I'm going to blow up the earth. And he, like, restarts. He has no reason to to, (laughs) do that. Elizabeth's like, Sarah Jane has this great moment where she's just like, why? Yeah. (laughs) Why are you doing this? He's just like, my dad wanted to. (laughs) And he's like, I mean, he really is like Kylo Ren because he's just like, He's like, I gotta do this. I gotta, I gotta finish what he started. And he's like, No, 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 no. He was good at the end. Yeah. yeah. Right before you killed him, he was good again. No. And he's like, Ah, oh, forget about that. <laughs> he was right when he was bad. <laughs> Help me do it. It's literally Kylo Ren. Yeah. Just throwing fits like for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he starts the clock again and. Every time, man. I'm just like, oh, man, are they going to blow up the Earth on Doctor Who? Um, So (laughs) the Doctor's off doing science, and the Brig has this disintegrator gun, and he's just like, oh, man, maybe now's my chance to save the day. I'm just going to disintegrate the robot. And the robot comes out with Sarah Jane, and he's like, keep away, blah, blah, robot. And so the Brig shoots the the robot. (laughs) Yeah, the Brig shoots him with the disintegrator gun, but then the robot... (laughs) Starts growing to the size of like a mecha anime, and it's like, so he now, hates it. which, 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 for those of you who hasn't seen Star Wars, is exactly how it is. <laughs> yeah, Star Killer Base, just a 30, 30 story tall Kylo Ren. Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Grandpa. <laughs> He really loves his grandma. So, so he's like three, he's like thirty feet tall now, and he's just like stomping around. And he picks up Sarah and puts her on a building, and she's Dad, screaming. <laughs> and, there, and there's like three layers. It's the weirdest thing because there's three layers of blue screen happening <laughs> yeah. because, be, like, because they couldn't, they couldn't. Obviously, they couldn't make K nine like the size of a building, so obviously he's he's kind of like blue screened in. Yeah, but they could. They also, for some reason, couldn't shoot like Sarah Jane on a roof, so they have her on a on a blue screen too. So you've got the plate of the roof, and then you've got the you've got you've got K one blue screened in to be giant, <laughs> and then you've got normal size Sarah Jane blue screened holding on to nothing. 
but pretending it's the it's the chimney on the roof. Now it's it's bizarre. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, I bet you're wondering how do they pull it off? And the answer is they simply don't pull it off. No, they don't. <laughs> but you just go with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man. It's definitely not the worst that the no, special no. effects are during not even during the fourth Doctor era. A couple <laughs> years from now, ooh boy. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously K one. I mean, you know, genuinely K one has a very. I mean, you know, Scott said he wanted to hug him, and yeah, that's true. He has a very memorable, you know, quintessential quintessential Whovian design. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he's great. Kind of like the Daleks about how they're evil, but they're also like really sad and vulnerable. I just like how simple he is. He's just very simple. Yeah, and he has like big, he has big stupid claws and like Yeah. In another <laughs> world, like he could be like Baymax, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man, imagine if Baymax just went evil. He's like the com- he's like a combination of the Iron Giant and Baymax. Mm-hmm. But like a little bit of but a little bit of Dalek thrown in. Yeah, with like a with like a splash of Dalek. <laughs> well, no, with like with like a with like a, like a like a Johnny Johnny Walker bottle of Kylo Ren. <laughs> yeah. Like like a shot of Kylo Just... Ren and a splash of Dalek. Oh my god. Cuz K1 oh. seems to love emotions. I mean, he 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 does not shy away from his feelings at all. I mean, neither does neither does Kylo yeah, Ren. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that that kind of overtakes the that kind of overtakes the Dalekness of him, I think. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Um I'll never then, forget sitting in the movie and theater he, and like when that stormtrooper was like, "Hey, Kylo Ren, uh, Ray escaped," and he just like pulls out his lightsaber and just destroys that count that console. Yeah, um, uh-huh. there was like he was over and he was like panting, and this person in the audience was like, "Dude," <laughs> <laughs> and, like it was it's kind of what we were all feeling. We were like, "This guy's." Kind of a spaz. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, oh god. The other thing that I love too is like after he drops off Sarah Jane on the roof, Unit shows up like down the like across the street, yeah. and they show up, and one of them comes with a bazooka. <laughs> yeah. They fire fires the bazooka, and then they follow up the bazooka with like grenades, with, like open gu- yeah. open gunfire, and then grenades. And and the thing that's funny about grenades is like there's only one way you can shoot a grenade. Like and I mean shoot it like on camera. There's only one way to shoot a grenade. You have to shoot it in close up. Because if you do not shoot it in close up, it just looks like a bunch of people flinging rocks. Yeah. Like it just it just just like just like five lazy extras are just like uh like just what <laughs> now brigadier lazily Throw. Lazily throwing rocks Throw the rocks in the at general your direction of across the street. You will kill this metal man with rocks. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my god. So, Ugh. despite having a rocket launcher and several grenades and all of the guns in Great Britain, <laughs> they have terrible aim. Um... And the brig, the brig's like, "Oh, fall back, fall back!" And but there's this one guy who runs forward for no reason and is just trying to shoot at this robot, and he gets stepped on, and it's just like the un- he's the- trying to be a hero. <laughs> it's like the most unceremonious thing. He's just like shooting at this robot, and the robot's like, "Burnt!" And he steps on him. You know, you you know what, Cassandra? What? That's what happens when you try and be a hero. <laughs> you get stepped on by a giant emotional robot. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's he's like walking and he he runs into some power lines and he gets like shocked a little and then you just like get it's like when you have a mosquito in your face he just kind of like casually like swipes it away and it just like falls yeah. in the street he's like oh move that K-1, move that stuff out of the way i think oh k1's like top three things that he does is i think crying flailing <laughs> he's really good at flailing and falling. So falling, Kylo flailing, Ren. And, <laughs> and crying. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the oh, doctor man. figures yeah. out <laughs> the doctor figures out this He's like a he he's literally a Sid and Marty Croft character. <laughs> I mean it's, it's 
<laughs> it's ridiculous. I just love him so much. He's like the robot HR pup and stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> favorite thing. <sighs> I feel like the I feel like the robot should be a character on um, what's it? The Bojack Horseman just like just sh- Yeah. <laughs> He's just sitting in a bar drinking. Um uh, I killed my dad. <laughs> So the doctor figures out this virus stuff, and he has just a bucket of red goop. Um, and he, like, comes by, like, in Bessie. He's driving Bessie, and Harry's with him. And they're just like, yeah, we're going to go save the day. So he, like, they drive by, and he, like, flings it at the robot's legs. And it's, like, <laughs> it's it's like starts to turn red, and he's like, ah! And he's just, like, shrieking and yelling and flailing. <laughs> he's the, he never he's accepting starting to that. shrink. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> and sh- that, it, it, it's such a it's such a messy bucket it's a messy yeah it's just a messy bucket of science it's like it's like if nickelodeon slime were red like that's what this stuff looks like and he's just like oh and he like it, <laughs> and the doctor it. almost spills it yeah, everywhere he like, like, it out of the car. He, he's not being careful He's not being careful at all. The wiki just describes it as a batch of virus. <laughs> a batch of virus. <laughs> let me a just whip of... up. Let me just whip up this batch of virus. Just a bucket of germ. <laughs> oh my god! And there's this this shot that I love of all these unit extras just watching this happening. Like, oh man, what's going on? <laughs> what do we do? Yeah, they're cause, just like, oh, like, because you, you can hear him screaming in the background. It's <laughs> yeah. like the soldiers are just like, he's like, ah, ah, <laughs> just slowly shrinking and melting at the same time. Yeah, yeah. everyone's like, oh, oh man. And then just so, cut to this like pile of lasagna on the ground. Yeah, and he just disappears and breaks down into dust, and. Like, Sarah Jane is still on a roof, and she's, like, yelling for help, and it's, like, throughout this whole thing. So, like, the robot's yelling, and Sarah Jane's yelling, and these unit guys are like, man, what what a day at the office, am I right? (laughs) One (laughs) weird robot. (laughs) And then it cuts to, um, back at unit, and Sarah Sarah Jane's just kind of, like, stunned and staring off into space, and she's just like, oh, man. And, like, the doctor's just like, hey, hey, Sarah, hey, are you okay, Sarah? Hey, Sarah, hey. Do you want a jelly baby, Sarah? And it's like the first, like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's like that five. Where did he get those jelly babies? I don't from? know. Did he just stop at the store? I don't know. Did he just like, did you just find him in Bessie? They've just what? been in the TARDIS for three hundred years. It's cool. It's cool. Jelly baby. Um, but that's like his there iconic is. thing, and it's just like, oh hey, from the beginning. Um, there it is. And like. Sarah Jane's like, yeah, you know, I'm just bummed about the robot that tried to kill everybody and was kind of sweet on me. And the doctor's like, oh, no, it's fine. And It had emotions, um, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> it was real. Um, and the brig wants the doctor to, like, you know, talk to all these world leaders and stuff about how, the like, the world almost got blown up. And the doctor's like, no, I don't want to do that. It's stupid. And he throws kind of a temper tantrum. Um, and he says this quote that I love. Um, and... Sarah Jane's like, oh, Doctor, you're being kind of childish. And he's like, well, yeah, there's there's no point in being a grown-up if you can't be childish sometimes. And I think that, like, epitomizes this Doctor and also, like, the Doctor in general. Um, yeah, again, it's very it's very reminiscent of Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's, like, wrap-up and Sarah, like, the Doctor's like, oh, you know, let me take you on a spin in the TARDIS and cheer you up from all this weird robot stuff. And she's like, oh, okay. And then Harry shows up. He's like, hey, guys, what you talking about? And the Doctor's like, oh, man, why don't you go inside this police box? Isn't that crazy? And they, like, he checks it out and he has, like, the the most, like, laid-back <laughs> reaction to the TARDIS. It's, it's the single it's the single best reaction to the TARDIS I've ever seen anyway. Because we don't we don't see like, him enter. He just like they're listening from the outside and he's like, I'll say and they're just like, ha ha and like, <laughs> I'll say <Yeah. laughs> all right. Cool. And so they get in the TARDIS and they leave and the brig comes back like mid sentence, like, oh doctor, blah 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 blah. And then he's just like, oh well I guess I guess I'll tell these people that you'll be late, and then it's just like, beow, this, like, beow, 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 and then it just yeah. ends. <laughs> the brigadier, 
<laughs> the bigger deer walks in, sees the TARDIS is gone, and just goes, oh, well, I, uh, I guess I should start sending out my resume. No. <laughs> no, there's this, it, no, there's such a pimp. It, it, this line, this was also very reminiscent of Kingsman, but it's just like, tell Buckingham Palace the Doctor might be a little bit late. And it's like, Squaw! you know? It's yeah. so yeah. dope. <laughs> Everybody's going to jail. Everybody's going to jail. <laughs> Just cut to different <laughs> different angles of dead K one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh god. The picture on the wiki of of K one's uh, disintegrated body <laughs> it's so pathetic. Is, it's just it's just this it's just this orange pile of rust, <laughs> and then it's the the picture the picture has the has the like underneath caption. the picture it just says yeah the caption it says the end of k1 oh my god yeah uh, i love <laughs> that this episode is just called robot robot yeah because that's yeah. that is what he is at the end of the day yeah, just he's a robot just a robot standing in front of a girl <laughs> <laughs> telling him that he's her new mommy oh God. I will say, mentioning uh, HR Puffin stuff, I just went and looked up HR Puffin stuff, and I just I was surprised by the fact that there was only seventeen episodes of HR Puffin stuff. <laughs> but each one of them was a classic. It's a it's a weird the, fun fact for the you. Monsters come to Mayberry, Walking Distance, great great episodes only, of HR Puffin stuff. <laughs> only only seventeen uh, episodes with Witchy Poo and friends. Uh, how many episodes of Sigmund and the Sea Monsters were there? I don't know. Okay. Uh, if you want to go on our <laughs> website, that's the doctor's companion. <laughs> you can tell us how many episodes. <laughs> yeah, tell us how many episodes Sigmund of Sigmund and the Sea Monsters there were. Um, Scott, I really want the photo in this episode to be the photo in the wiki of K1, like, looking down. It looks like a rolled doll book, but it's like K1 looking down at Sarah Jane. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. Uh, he kind of is like the BFG, isn't he? He's a little. He's got a little BFG in him. Yeah. You know what? The twelfth Doctor needs a robot. I want the next companion to be an emotional robot. No. I would love. I would love for them to get the rights to K nine back so they can have K nine and twelve. But that would be. But imagine K nine, but the voice of Bill Nighy. <laughs> I know, Doctor. I was wondering if you'd like to go on a space adventure. But he's just like a little robot guy. <laughs> well, affirmative. I was wondering if we could just pop off a little bit and just go and have sex with some ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, affirmative. I feel it in my fingers. <laughs> He's just wearing this like. Oh. I feel like I'm not gonna do it, but I think you could say affirmative master in the tune of that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do it though. I'll I'll let the listeners imagine that for themselves. Oh my god! <laughs> I love K9 so much, oh, and I love Bill Nye so much. Hashtag Who's a Good Dog? <laughs> oh man. So that about wraps it up for Robot. Uh, pretty amazing episode. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, everything that we described to you is real. And uh, <laughs> should be seen for yourself. Uh, doctorscompanion.us, uh, if you want to leave a comment about anything we missed or what else. You know, if you want to draw, if anyone wants to Photoshop K1 into the Force Awakens poster, that'd be really cool. Um <laughs> Oh, finish what you started, and he walks. He walks away, and it's just the the head of Professor Capricorn, oh, no. <laughs> just in just in in, in, a, in, a, in like a bowl, in a bowl, Papa, in in, in his evil litter box, whatever the hell that was. Sure, forgot about the litter box. Yeah, the evil litter box. It's just so gross. Game one's gross. Uh. <laughs> Contact at the doctor's companion dot us if you want to email us. Tweet us at TDC Pod. We love hearing from you guys. Uh we have a Tumblr now, the Doctor's Companion Podcast dot Tumblr dot com. 
And uh, as always, leave us a, you know, talk to us on Facebook. Uh, leave us a five star review on iTunes. It's the trashiest thing you can do for a podcast. Back to the future. If you've already, if you, if you've already left an iTunes review, we would appreciate an update to your review if you could sure. like kind of kind of reviewing the new version yeah. of the show a lot's, that, would, a lot's be, that changed. would be really helpful yeah uh, back to the future minute we are uh wrapping it up uh with season one of that show and getting ready for uh season two hashtag shoe is coming uh so we got that coming up <laughs> um geek by night the crown jewel of the dueling genre empire episode five well when we're recording this just dropped today directed and co-written by cassandra congratulations cassandra yeah thank you yeah Turned out fantastic, and uh, you can really help us out by, uh, you know, becoming a patron on Patreon of Geek by Night and help us keep this show going and at a quality at which we find acceptable. <laughs> it's the most K-1 way to ever say that. And uh, coming <laughs> next week, we'll be exploring the fifth Doctor's first adventure, Castrovalva. Cast- Castrovalva? Something like that. Castrovalva. Castrovalva. <laughs> the doctor goes in search of El Dorado. Is this, uh, so will we not be seeing Sarah Jane next time? No. 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 Which is sad. You'll, you'll be introduced to, you'll be introduced to three brand new companions. Oh, good. Yeah. It's a, it's a loaded, it's a loaded TARDIS next week. Fuller TARDIS. <laughs> loaded to the gills. Bye. Bye.